You are listening to the Ivy Podcast. Learn from the thought leaders in areas of strategy, innovation, negotiation, and all things leadership. We interview the Ivy League, Fortune 100, and top startups. Now, here's your host, John Carsey Baev. My guest for this episode on the Ivy Podcast is Manish Nakpal, an executive from Fair Logics, who heads up their global sales engineering team. He helps airlines deliver on their distribution and retailing strategies by aligning customer objectives with next generation technology from Fairlogix. Through his 20 year career, Manish has planned, developed and delivered technology products and solutions. In addition to being a goal oriented technology executive and leader with technical expertise in software engineering and product development, Manish is known for his ability to recruit, develop and revitalize development and product teams. Welcome to the Ivy podcast. Manish, you've been with the company for over 14 years. Can you please tell us a little bit more about the company and your role within the organization? Sure. So, if I have to sum it up, Fairlogix is a technology company primarily focused on helping airlines create and distribute their offer. Um, when I'm, What I mean by distribute their offer or create their offer is Whenever you go to airline website, right, you search for a city pair, Miami, London, Miami, Delhi, San Francisco. So what the result you get back from them, that's their initial offer. And distributing their offer, meaning to not just to their airline dot com now, but to also other travel agencies, corporate, TMCs, OTA, Metas. Uh, so that's the core business of Fair Logics helping airline create an offer and then help them distribute it. My role within company, um, as I told you, have been with the company from last 14 years. I still remember uh, the company was small and we it was this size of room. We all used to sit around the table like this and just code. Uh, so that was fun time. Uh, but over the years, um, I have moved, started as a developer, then moved to manager, director, and then VP of product development. Um, but uh, recently, my role changed, and now I have, I'm heading the global sales engineering uh, department within the company. Okay, great. And being with the company since the very beginning, you must have, you know, you've experienced it all. All the that is that is true. Experienced yeah. it all from you know starting to build the product. Then you get a phase where you want to now expand, sell. Now you have sold the product. Now you have more customers to expand. So yes, gone through all that. That's great. Um, what are you most passionate about being a technology leader for airline software provider companies? It's very u- unique, very niche industry. It is very mm-hmm. niche, uh, but it's an exciting era in the airline industry right now. And um, the reason is the whole industry is going through major transformation. Um, all airlines want to be a true retailer like Amazon, you know. Uh, they want to basically generate and present customized offer um, to their customers, very customer centric. Um, so it is exciting era. There are a lot of areas within the airline industry where uh, innovation is happening. But what I personally most passionate about is um, dynamic offer uh, where a lot of airlines now don't want to just send every single product and offer to every single customer. They would really want to present what is relevant to to a given customer, right? And um, as part of that, I'm actually um, in one of the industry working group. Um, and that industry working group, uh, it's an organization called IATA. It's a big organization. Um, 500 airlines belongs to that um non-profit organization and uh, I'm part of that working group responsible to help build end-to-end architecture um, and guidelines around dynamic offer for the whole industry. Very interesting. Um, To take that further a little bit, airline commerce and distribution is an interesting domain and Fairlogix seems to have been disrupting that industry for quite some time. 
to the extent that you can, of course, please share with us some of the most innovative initiatives that you have been leading within the organization. So, uh, yeah, as part of my product development role in Fair Logics, I was responsible to to build airline shopping engine, and uh, which is, I will say, is one of the most complex product in 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 the airline industry as a whole. And the reason of the complexity is because that same offer which I explained to you, right, the sh the shopping engine when you do a search, Miami, Le Miami, Delhi, Miami, San Francisco. There are there are billions of computation happening behind the scene before that result sets comes to you, and the reason being because that there are hundreds of computation from going from one place to another with the connection point, and the airlines files a lot of fares uh, that can change every hour, and the inventory can change every minute. Um, so they file hundreds and thousands of fares for each city, which has thousands of rules attached to it. So it comes out to be like billions of computation, which has to be done within a couple of seconds to get you that result. So it's quite challenging uh, product. And I was fortunate enough to be part of that and help build that product for Fair Logics to help airlines. Okay, wow, that's fascinating. Um, and so you've been leading the development of travel industry most successful merchandising e engine that uh, you, you were talking about. What have been the most rewarding and most challenging aspects of overseeing such an important initiative, not only for your company, but for the industry in general? Yeah, good question. Um, I'll say the most rewarding aspect is to is to see satisfied, happy customers. You know, when you get a um, good, happy, satisfied customer, that's rewarding to you. Um, the f the engine, the product, the merchandising engine actually helped airlines generate billions of dollars in in incremental revenue. Um, there, there is a study done just recently by McKinsey uh, where they are predicting that that incremental revenue is going to increase to 40 billion dollar annually uh, by year 2030. So that's exciting part, um, being part of the journey and the product uh, which has helped airline as well as the whole industry transform. Okay, that's great. Um, so you, Fair Logics has been a private company for quite some time and then most recently you guys have been acquired by a much larger organization, Sabre. Uh, just curious, I've personally, when I was part of other organizations, I have lived through multiple acquisitions, mergers. Um, so from your perspective, how much did the culture of your organization has changed since that acquisition and what's been uh, some of the challenging aspects? So believe it or not, the closing has not happened yet. So we are still fair logics. DOJ has um, objected it. Uh -huh. And... Uh, they are taking it to a trial. So, oh, wow. okay. so January 27th is the date when the trial is going to happen. So we will know by then, in, by February, if we are saber or we are still <laughs> <laughs> Right. Have you, have you seen any shifts or any, any changes in, in, you know, just perception or culture in general ever since that was announced? Or? Yeah, so... Um, that is the um, challenging part, right? Being in that state where you can't make m major decisions. Uh, but culture-wise, I won't say uh, there is a big, big, um, big shift because the executive team has done a great job communicating everything clearly to the to the employees. And um, one of the reasons for Saber actually bought. Uh, I think acquired um, a Fair Logics is because of the technology, the people, and the culture of the um, Fair Logics. So I don't think anybody would like to see the culture change too right. much. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, because anytime you get acquired or become part of larger organization, you know, obviously there are situations where 
motivation, employee satisfaction, right. and things like that change. Right. Right. Um, just curious to get your perspective from that standpoint. How would uh, what are some of the strategies that could help uh, the leadership of the team to keep their employees engaged? Um, yeah. So, so like I said, right? The the communication is the key, um, and the executive dumb team has done a really great job communicating the same to to employees um, we have okrs so each employee know what's the company goal the department goal and their individual goal which gets revised um, at very frequently so that also helps so overall i think uh, keeping the focus uh, employee centric customer centric focus and communication um, along with putting some processes around has helped overall right. keeping the same culture. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, <clears throat> as you guys operate in very unique space, I would imagine that there are certain very niche skill set that is needed to, to help you guys not only sustain but grow. I'm curious um, what strategies have helped you recently or in the, in the past to identify and recruit some of that most uh, challenging skill set yeah. out in the market? Yeah, it's it's hard to find, you know, the leaders, um, especially the team leads to lead a small team um, around C, C++ programmers. So what, what has helped us is we collaborated with FIU. Um, we have a um, um, R&D lab. We are doing it with them around AI and machine learning. And also we have an internship program with them. Um, so those things have helped. Um, the benefits certainly has helped. Fair logics have very generous benefits. Uh, it gives employees full medical for their family without any um, contribution from the employees. Uh, so and free lunch so that's always popular <laughs> uh, getting free food of course. always helps <laughs> yeah that's great um, and I see a lot of trends these days especially when you talk about some internship opportunities or partnerships with education sector where companies some very successful where they invest heavily into uh, the growth and the development of that, you know, almost uh, the younger generation being able to expand and provide them with opportunities to learn, which then hopefully translates to much stronger skill set that joins the organization. All right. So that sounds very exciting, like you yeah. guys in the right direction to yes. be able to identify. Yeah, and FIU is close by, you know, they are just a couple of miles, so that, that proximity helps too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just curious, <clears throat> good portion of our listeners, uh, like I was telling you, second year MBA grads and upcoming, you know, professionals entering the workforce. For those that who may be interested in, in joining this type of industry or, or let's say fair logics, um, what would what would you say a successful entry level person? Would need to know or what makes somebody successful to you know operate and grow within the company like fair logics i'll say um so you have two two sets of question right how to how to enter fair logics right. <laughs> and <laughs> yes. then how to grow it within fair logics exactly. <laughs> so how to enter fair logics we 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 are recruit i mean we have doubled our workforce in last um, one and a half years I'll say two two years it almost doubled so there are a lot of opportunities what's the current sure. headcount approximately it's like 315 oh, wow uh, yeah mm -hmm. uh, but we have yeah we are almost doubled in last couple of years uh, so as we we have a lot of developers so if you are a good developers always there is a job for you in fair logics I'll say a um, lot of develop, lot of recruitment around uh, BAs, um, business analysts, and good PMs, uh, project managers for sure. A lot of opportunities there. So once you are in the company, of course, um, y you have to own it, right? That's the phrase our CEOs keeps using it these days. Run hard and own it. So if 
if you if you if you are a honest person and you want to own and run with it i think you have a good future in fair logics that's great thank you uh for sharing and providing that insight so uh, for anyone who may be interested in careers with fair logics that's one of the you know critical traits and i think that applies to you know anywhere um curious um whom would you like to see appear on on the Ivy podcast and and why? I guess if if you were to recommend somebody to sh- yeah, that you think has a unique and interesting story in terms of uh, great initiatives or transformation, it's, they, a, but, it's a hard one uh, because I cannot match CTO of Microsoft because that's hard to match. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I wish I knew a CTO of Microsoft. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. there is a there is a gentleman, Alton Diego. He is they are right here in Evermundo. He is a CEO and uh, founder of Evermundo. They are doing some interesting stuff around the domain of airlines, IBE. Mm-hmm. Um, so that name comes to my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, Another good friend is uh, Sanjay Deo. He is the founder of President of 24 by 7 Security. Um, he's a local well-known name in South Florida, um, been with so many different companies. So um, just those are the two names. Came Great. Up. Thank you for sharing that. We'll definitely try to reach out to them and get them, get them on the live podcast. Manish, I know you're a very busy man. Um, anything that you would like to highlight in closing remarks, perhaps a favorite quote or anything that we have not touched upon? So, um, favorite quote. Um, recently, I did a speech in our annual meeting, actually, just last week. Um, that's what's coming to my mind. And uh, what I spoke about was passion and compassion. Um, so basically how both passion and compassion need to coexist for personal and organizational growth um, was kind of the topic and I think I truly believe in it because a lot of time we always think passion, 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 right? You need to be passionate about work, absolutely. But we sometimes miss the compassion part of it, uh, compassion towards others. And I truly believe for a company and organization where you have others, people, different department, different silos, you you need that human compassion to be really successful and grow. Wow, that's very deep. That's very insightful. <laughs> thank you for sharing that. Uh, Manish, I really appreciate your time and thank you so much for uh, no, talking to you on no, every podcast. No, thank you. I mean, this is this is great experience. This is first time, but uh, I think you guys are doing a, a, a good innovative things in your own area. Thank you for listening to the Ivy Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our RSS feed on ivypodcast.com and all major podcasting platforms like Spotify and iTunes. As always, if you enjoyed this podcast, please give us a rating on iTunes.